The first thing I want to mention with this question is that the questions do carry on on the next slide. So it's these two over here, and then there's this one, and then we've got these three over here. So six questions in total for this one. The table below shows the estimates on the number of full-time employees per quarter from June 2018 to September 2022. Okay, so let's just quickly see what's happening here. We've got 2018, and they've got June, September, December. Then they've got 2020, March, June. Okay, we get that. Um, okay, so they're showing us the different years. They've got some months. And then they're saying number of employees in thousands. So this would be actually 1,134,000. So these are millions, okay? Then it says change in number of employees in thousand. Okay, and then it says percentage change. Okay, so it's a bit of a weird thing for now. It doesn't make perfect sense, but let's see the questions. So it says identify the month and the year that had the lowest number of full-time employees. Okay, so that one we're just gonna go to the full-time and we're just gonna look for the smallest number over here. Okay, so the smallest one I can see so far, I might see a smaller one, 1036, let me just double check. No, that's it. So it's going to be this one over here. Now it says identify the month and the year. So that is going to be June of 2020. So we can say June 2020. This question says, give the number of full-time employees for the third quarter of 2022 to the nearest million. Now we need to talk about quarters of a year. So we know that we have 12 months. So we've got January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. Now, to break those up into quarters, then every three months, you would break it up. There we go. So we call this the first quarter of the year, Q1. This is the second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter. Remember, quarters are into fours. So it says, give the number of full-time employees for the third quarter. Okay, third quarter. Um, so that's the July, August, or September months for the year 2022. So 2022, there's no July, there's no August, but there is a September. So it'll be this one over here. But now be careful. These are in thousands. So we're going to go 1097,000. Now that is a million and then 97,000. So they said to the nearest million. So are we gonna round that to one million or two million? Well, that'll just stay at one million. So we're just gonna go one million like that. This question says, for four marks, calculate the percentage change, and they've given us a formula for that, so don't stress. Um, correct to one decimal, okay, we must remember that, in the number of employees from June 2020, so June 2020, so that's here, don't go here because that's 2018. So it's June 2020 and um, to September 2020. Okay, so we're just gonna look at these two numbers over here. Now, we're just gonna use this formula. So the new value will be the one that comes later. So that'll be September. Okay, so we're just gonna go um, percentage change is equal to the new value. Now you don't have to um, change it to millions now. It will it will still give us the same answer uh, because we're just looking at the percentage change. So whether we add the million or not doesn't make a difference, but if you want to, you can. But then you must do it for all of them. You must do it for this number and this number. Okay, so I'm gonna just keep it as it is. So it's 1,039 minus the old value, which is 1,036 divided by the old value, which is 1,036, multiplied by 100%. Okay, so type it in on your calculator just like that. There are things that can go wrong here if you type it in a weird way. Okay. Like some learners do this. They go 1039 minus 1036. Whoa, what the heck happened there? 1036 divided by 1036 times 100%. This is going to give you a totally different answer because... According to bod mass, it's only going to divide these two numbers, okay? And that's why we we rather just write it as they've got it here, okay? And then we times that by 100. Oh, you don't have to put the percentage sign, my bad. Um, 
yeah, I don't know why they do that because some learners will put the percentage sign and yeah, it's it's silly. They should just say times 100 so that it will give you a percentage. Okay, and so that's, that, and now they said to two decimal places, I mean to one decimal place. So we get 0 0.28957, blah, blah, blah. Now to round that off, um, we're gonna round this number. Now that number's either gonna stay as a two or it's gonna go up to a three. So the way that we do it is we look at this number. That number is large, it's five or more, so it's gonna make it go to a three. So we're gonna get an answer of 0.3%. Write down the modal value from March 2020, from March 2020, okay, all the way to September 2022. Okay, so they wanna know what is the modal value over here, the modal value is just the number that appears the most. So what number do you see happening the most often? Now I was looking at this for a few seconds and I'm like, what is going on? Like, I don't understand, there's no modal value. But then I look on the memo and there is no modal value. Remember, a modal value is like this, um, three, five, five, six, eight, and 10. Now some learners, they're like, oh, that's the mode because it's the most. No, the modal or the mode is the number that you see the most. So that would be the five. The five, you can see it happens twice. So if you look here, there is no number that appears more than once. So there is no modal value. No modal value. This question says, give one reason why the number of full-time employees decline in any industry. They don't mean that the they don't mean that the number of employees are just going to decrease the whole time. They're just saying why why do um retire I mean why do the numbers decrease? And that's mainly because of retirement. At um you know every year there are new people entering the job market, but then there are also people exiting the job market. So if we have a specific period where there are more people retiring compared with people who are beginning to work, then we will have a decline in the number of employees. So we could say here, retirement, or let's say here, people reaching, reti re <laughs> reaching retirement, people reaching retire. Mint. Okay, this question. Give the reason why the other values are written in brackets. Whenever we have brackets on a document like this, like an invoice or a anything like that, it's usually to mean a negative. That that's what it means. It means negative. So for example, if you go from one one four one to one one five two. To go from that number to that number, you have to add 11. To go from this number to this number, you have to add 7. To go from this number to this number, you have to minus 73. So brackets are there to represent a negative. So let's just say here, they are negative. 